Hello guys, today will be a lesson for those of you who want to start using Vue.js with Laravel but were hesitating and maybe were afraid to start. In this lesson I will show you a practical example switching this project you see on the screen from typical Laravel blade and backend to Vue.js version which will look a little bit different. So if we refresh the page you see the loading for a fraction of a second. So this is a Vue.js version with the API. So I will do live coding of switching typical Laravel to view and API and I hope you will learn from that. And this is probably the most simple example I could come up with and I'm a big believer that people should learn from practical examples. Without even knowing all the theory behind Vue.js and JavaScript, practical example is the best way to start. So let's start. So what do we have here? We have a home page of a catalog. On the left hand side you see the list of categories, fake names and then list of products. Also with fake names, fake prices and descriptions. In the database it's very simple, 10 categories and 10 products with relationship to category ID. In the code there is only one route in routes web PHP file, get to the home controller, home controller index gets all the categories and all the products, without any pagination or filters, I just thought to go simple with this example, and we return the view home which just returns the for each of the products and categories like this, so for each products and then for each categories on the left. And the front-end team is taken from a bootstrap theme from start bootstrap shop homepage. It's really really simple based on bootstrap 4. Now let's transform that to Vue.js. Where do we start? First we will start with the backend with the API layer that would return products and categories to the front-end and then we will take care of Vue.js. So let's go to our routes API PHP and create two routes. Route get categories and it will be API controller category controller index. A few things here to mention. It's a good practice to put your API controllers in their own subfolder and namespace and also a controller is named in singular form category controller and not categories controller. But it's just a good practice it's not required. And we duplicate that role into products and it will be product controller as well. For now they don't exist, so let's generate them. So open our terminal, PHP artisan, make controller API slash category controller. An API folder doesn't exist yet and it will be created with the controller. And also let's do product controller. Product controller. Okay, let's open our tree of files and we see controller API category controller. An important thing, if you specify subfolder here, it will also generate the namespace for you, which is correct. So don't forget the namespace for subfolders. And we go index and we return all the categories. Category all. That's it for now and for product controller we do really similar thing. Index return product all. Let's try that in a browser. So we go project test slash API slash categories. By default all the routes in routes API PHP are prefixed with API. And this is our result. It's not really readable, right? So I suggest to use some API client like Postman where we can go and copy paste the URL, click send. And this is a much more readable format. So all the fields of categories. But what I like to do is to hide some fields which are unnecessary or maybe even harmful to show. So web clients don't really need to know when the category was created. Is it new or not? So let's hide created ad and updated ad and for that we will create API resource. PHP artisan make resource category resource and similar we will have product resource. And it will generate a few files in app HTTP resources, category resource. And resource file is a set of rules what to return from the API. So instead of default parent to array, we will return exactly what we need. So return array, and for the category we need ID of this ID. This is actually the category object, and then name this name and delete that line. And it looks pretty pointless, right? So we're listing the same ID and name and attaching that to variable, but the point here is to not list created at and updated at. 
we save the resource and in controller instead of doing category all we will do category resource collection and then category all as a parameter let's try it out and see what happens if we refresh in the postman send the same thing two things happen first as we wanted created at and updated at are gone but also another layer of data and this is a good practice enabled by default in laravel and i advise you to leave it like that because in addition to data there might be more information like error messages pagination next page and stuff like that and let's do the same for the products we will actually copy paste the same thing to product resource and we need description additionally this description and also price and price is an interesting thing api resources are for set of rules not only for hiding some fields but also to transform them before the resources came to laravel in laravel 5.5 people were using something like transformers and some packages to transform the data so eloquent results may bring more data but the actual return from the api may be different or smaller and for the price, we need to do exactly that. Price is saved in the database as integer, like this. And you can Google articles about precision why it needs to be like that. So Google precision double float money and a lot of articles why you should not store the database floats for the money. But you need to transform them while returning. So we need on the price, we need to do number format. This price divided by 100 with two decimals. And in the controller, we do product resource collection product all. Let's try the products actually. Slash products, we send. And we have an error. This is the beauty of live coding products controller. Of course, I made mistake, which I've mentioned myself. So instead of category, singular, I did products in plural. Okay, product controller it should be. Let's refresh, send. Now we have what we need. Product ID, name, description, and price. And if we return how it should look visually, that's exactly what we need. So name, price, and description. And for the category, we need only name. So we took care of the API of the backend. We are returning products and categories and API endpoints. So API URLs are called endpoints. Now let's go to Vue.js route. Let's go to our blade file and let's transform it to not load the HTML immediately instead of all the container with the categories list and products list we will have one div element which will contain all the actions of Vue.js so this is how Vue.js works you need to have an element with some kind of id and we will call it app it's pretty typical and inside of that everything will be happening all the magic of Vue.js and you will specify that the app is the core element of your Vue.js we will get to that in a second and inside of that app you can do HTML, you can do whatever, and also you can load the components. Vue.js components, and we will have one component which will contain all the logic of here. So let's call that component front page. Front page. And it looks like an HTML tag, right? But in reality, it will be a Vue.js component which will contain all of that. So let's copy and paste all of that div container. In fact, cut and paste. So we don't need that at all. And that yield content is irrelevant it's from some older project. So this means everything else will be static and this part will be dynamic. And let's create a component in resources JS folder. Let's create a subfolder components. And let's create a component dot view file, new file. And it's the best practice to name them in camel case. So from uppercase letter. So front.view. And we paste all of that content for now in Blade language. And every view component has two parts, the template, so the HTML part, and the JavaScript part. So this should be wrapped in template. So all of that is a template. I will reformat it with command alt L in PHP Storm. So this is our template for Vue.js. And now we need to tell Laravel or tell Vue.js that this component should be used and div app should be the main element. And this is done in file resources JS app JS, which looks like this in default Laravel. We need to require Vue.js. 
then tell the ID app to be main and then load the front component. So three things. And I will just copy and paste the code that I've prepared. This is how it looks in terms of syntax. So we require Vue.js. We tell that our component front page, which is the same as here, is attached to components front.view. And we also load the new view instance with ID app, which is the same as ID app here. So we delete all of that. To make it all work, we need to actually install Vue.js or in fact require it. And it's pretty similar to Laravel requirements like composer install, but for frontend, there is a separate file called package.json. Not composer.json, but package.json. And in here, I will also copy and paste Vue.js with a certain version, which is 2.5 in this case, but any version should be okay for this simple example. First, as an experiment, let's delete all the dynamic data and I will show you that it actually works and how it is compiled. So let's delete the for each part of the categories. Let's delete the product parts. And that's it. So we should see shop catalog and then empty page. We save the view. And final thing I wanted to show you here. So in that home blade, as you can see, there is no data. So we don't need to return anything from controller here. And in fact, we don't even need the controller then. So in our web PHP, we change get from controller to route view home. And that's it. So there's no controller. It will work this way. It will load the blade with HTML and then there will be JavaScript calling the API and loading the data. So as you can see in home blade, there's no actually blade syntax, except for this one maybe, but that could be replaced with something like this. Okay, let's get back to practice. To install all of that and to compile all of that, differently from the backend, you need to run some commands. And there are two commands to run, npm install and npm run dev. That's the default structure. It could be different for your environment. There are more commands and parameters, but by default, let's stick with those two for the simple example. So we go to our project and do npm install. And this will take quite a lot of time and it will install quite a lot of things. So be prepared to have like 100 megabytes on your drive and probably good internet connection as well. And that's it, it is done in 21 seconds. It's okay, so for a really small project it's quick, but if you load more stuff, it may take minutes. And now we do npm run dev building the modules and as you can see Laravel mix message built successful and the result of all of that is a file in public so public js app.js which is a compiled file it's really ugly it's really long javascript file so you don't need to know what's inside of that but it is actually the result that should be loaded inside of the blade so in our case we'll have script source and then Laravel mix command mix JS app JS. And that's it, we loaded the JavaScript. And now let's reload our page. So this is how it looked before. As you remember, we removed all the products and categories, new tab, project test, and it is empty, but it didn't throw any errors and it is successful. The proof of that is text shop catalog, which comes from view component from here. So it's not in the blade, but it is loaded via Vue.js. So this is the proof that it's actually working. And now let's load the data from the API. So as I said, Vue component has two parts, template and JavaScript. And let's create the second part. We go script, and then there's some weird syntax which I don't really want to explain. It's export default. And inside of that, you will post all the magic as I call that. And there are three parts we need to take care of that. Private properties of that component. So that component.view, you can imagine that as a PHP class, as object-oriented class, which will have its own parameters, its own, its own properties, which will be loaded from the API. So what properties we need to have? Products and categories, right? And we go data, function, callback function, return this, and go categories by default will be an array and products by default will be an array, empty array. So we define the properties similar to PHP object oriented class. Next, we need to go and define all the actions that should happen when that component is loaded. And this is called mounted. 
and inside of that mounted we will list all the actions and actions will be defined by private methods so see the similarities view component is pretty similar to php class it has properties and also it has methods methods and you just list the methods and we'll have load categories for example function which will load the category and then method load products function which will load the products and in the mounted we will just call both of them so this load categories as you can see it's already auto completed in php storm and also this load products you can take a pause and take a look at different syntax so sometimes there are brackets sometimes there are semicolons so you can read the Vue.js documentation for that but i will just move on with the example so this function load categories should load the categories from the api then assign that to the variables so this categories should be assigned and then catch errors if there's anything wrong happening with the api to load the api we have a package called axios which is by default in laravel here and for those of you who are familiar with jquery it should be dollar get or dollar ajax in this case it's axios get the url and we do them something and also catch something so this is the syntax we get the url something is happening to assign the variables and if something goes wrong there's a catch the url is slash api slash categories the one that we've created previously then we need to assign the response data to the private variable of this categories and this is the syntax response this categories equals response data and data again it looks pretty complicated but response data is the actual data returned from the api and since inside of that as you remember from api resource we have data also we need to add that data again and in catch you can do whatever you want with an error but console log error message that's it let's reformat that remove the unnecessary stuff php storm helped me to reformat that and now what is happening here actually we load the api from the server and then we get the response and we assign that to this categories and vue.js magic will assign that to private variable and we can show that variable here in the template part and we will do exactly that okay so i will just close the sidebar for now and we'll just paste the actual code so instead of for each categories we will have categories as private variable and this is the syntax of UGS of for each loop v4 in blade it would be for each categories as category in Vue.js is like this and then category becomes the variable of that loop and we need category name here let's launch and see if it works and if i didn't miss anything and again we cannot just refresh the browser we need to recompile the stuff so npm install and npm run dev okay npm install is finished npm run dev compiled successfully and now let's refresh the page refresh and what do we see on the left hand side list of categories so let's recap what is happening here behind the scenes the component is loaded by Vue.js that html is loaded and then mounted is fired which loads the categories the result of that category's API response is assigned to a private variable, private property, which is defined here. And I will remind you the API response for the categories is this one. So ID and name inside of the data. That's why that data is inside of this one. And then Vue.js takes care of the assigning the variables to be shown in the HTML in the template part. As a practice, let's repeat that with the products what do we need to do basically copy paste actually so axios get but it will be products so products it will be assigned to this products and then inside of here we will do v4 and to save you time i will just paste the code and it is similar v4 to the element but then it's more complicated on the inside some div class but still in the inside it's product dot something 
So anything returned from the API, name, price, and description. Remember, we returned that from the API. That should be it. npm install npm run dev again successfully and refresh the page. And we see our products. Magic, right? But let's add the actual magic, the loading screen, the loading GIF that would circle around until the data is actually loaded. For that, we will add another property called loading. And by default, it will be true, which means that while loading is true, no data should be shown. And we will add that here in the main container class, which is a Vue.js variable, loading if it is loading true. So this is the syntax. And class loading will come from CSS loading CSS. And I've prepared that CSS behind the scenes. So we will add class loading to the whole container if loading is true. And we will play around without loading being true or false. And when it's false, then the data is actually shown. So by default, we add that to loading true. And if we get a successful response from the products or the categories, we will set that to false. In fact, we need to set that to false only when we have the successful result of the last API call. So it is here. So this loading equals false, which will perform the action that this class will be not present which means it will open the container to be visible. I have recompiled the results and let's refresh the page. Refresh. And as you can see, the loading screen is happening. Let's do that again. So class loading is true by default, but when it gets the results from the products, it becomes false, which means removing that class and showing the actual container with all the data. So that's it, a crash course on Vue.js with Laravel API. And this could be your start, your beginning to actually start using Vue.js and the API. The code will be available on GitHub. If you want to get more videos about Laravel on this channel, you can do two things to support this channel. Use our Laravel admin panel generator, quickadminpanel.com, the link is on the screen, or enroll in one of my courses about Laravel at Teachable Platform. And see you guys in other videos.